troubleshooting tutorial. I'd like to start a new series of videos dealing with the most common questions I get from subscribers concerning JavaScript. As most of you know who've watched some of my videos, JavaScript is an integral part of making forms dynamic and making them robust and making them user friendly. And without a good knowledge of JavaScript, you really are handcuffed in how versatile you can be in your forms. I want to start today by talking about one of the basic ideas in JavaScript and lifecycle, which is object referencing. And so in a common form, we have objects. We have in this form here, from the hierarchy, we can see a label object. And we have three text fields. And then we have a uh, trailing label that has the URL of the website. And these these are referred to as objects. There, there's different types of objects. Obviously from the object library you can see all the different types and they all have different kinds of attributes. And when we're using JavaScript we have to have a way of referencing these objects so we can tell Lifecycle what, to, what we want to do with the objects. So one of the things that you commonly see in a script is a reference to an object uh, so that you can set a value of it. Uh, like in this example, uh, we have three text fields here in the middle and they each have a value. On the left, of course, this is a caption text field. That's caption. And we can see that here. And then they have a, a default value. Uh, this text field is sample text one. And we can change this to anything we want. Um, that's the default value. And of course, using JavaScript, we can change that value based on things that the user does. So we can say, if the user clicks this text box, maybe we want, we want it to do something. Or if the user types a certain value into the text field, we want something else to happen. And using JavaScript to do this, we have to have a, a working knowledge of what object references are. And so I want to open up the script editor here. And right now in our script editor we have um, for this object, the text field number one here, we have nothing. And so we could go to say a click event and on the click we could type in a, a simple little script, this dot raw value equals test test. All right, and so what we're telling the computer to do is this object right here, text one, if it's clicked, change the default value that we have set at sample text one, change that to test test. We preview the form, we click it, and in this example it's a little squirrely, but clicking it caused the field to change. And so what did we do there? How did, the, how did we reference this object? Well in this example we used what I would call a relative reference. And what I mean by that is we're actually programming inside of txt1. And how do we refer to txt1 when we're programming inside of it? Well this is one of the big concepts you need to understand in JavaScript and that is the keyword this. This is a is a way in JavaScript it's 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 a shorthand it's a simple way to refer to the object with which you're currently involved. So in this example this would equal txt1. Now we don't have to refer to it that way we can refer to it as txt1 which is its name we can say txt1 raw value equals test test or test one two three and we can remove this line of code and it'll have a, the same effect so when we click around the same effect happens the words change and so it's an important concept to get in your head this the keyword this refers to whatever object you're currently inside of, you're currently programming. We're inside the click event of the txt1 object. And so this 
any time in the code here, and we could type code forever and go on all day. Anytime we had the word this though, JavaScript would understand that to mean this object right here, txt1. Now that's important and we'll get to it later on why it's important, but just try to understand that concept. Now we have a code already in the second text field here and I'm going to show you that if I click on it. Not in the click event, in the exit event. So in the exit event we're saying if this dot raw value is set equal to hide, meaning if the, if the user types the word hide into this field, then this dot presence equals hidden. So again we're using the word this and we're referring to the object txt2 in this example because that's where we're at. We're in the exit event of txt2. So this now becomes a reference to txt2. It's a relative reference. It depends on where you're at. The meaning of this is dependent upon where you're, at, you're programming at. And um, to not belabor the point, but to give you the fi final example, you know, txt3, if we put this dot raw value equals test 321, the relative reference this refers to, in this example, txt3. All right. So now we have our examples. So in text 1, if we click, we get a result of 1, 2, 3. In txt2, if we type hide and then exit out that, the field hides. And then no matter what we type, as long as we exit it by hitting tab, then the text changes. So in JavaScript, it looks like we're referencing just this object called this, but in actuality, since it's a relative reference, we're referencing three different objects with the same piece of code. Now, what about absolute referencing? Well, that concept matches this one very well. The absolute reference of this object is found right at the top, form.page1.txt3. And that can be easily demonstrated by looking at the hierarchy. If you ever want to know the absolute reference of something, you just need to step down the hierarchy. So in this case, the topmost object is form, and then the secondary child object is page one, and then underneath that, txt3. And this can go on multiple levels. In other words, txt3 is a child of page one. Page one is a child of form. Or you could say it this way, form is a parent of page one, page one is a parent of txt3. And that becomes important when we start taking our, our relative reference this and going to the parent object. So if we say this dot parent, all of a sudden now, if we're in txt3, this dot parent now is referring to page one. And that's a relative reference. And we can do it again, parent. Now we're referring to the actual form. And so all the, th all the events and methods we get are form, uh, the form object methods and events. So now we need to answer the question, why does it matter? In this simple static example of three different fields, absolute referencing versus relative referencing doesn't seem to matter too much. All it, all it seems to do is save you a few, uh, save you some typing. You know, instead of txt1, six letters, you're typing four letters, this. And that is the least of the benefit of using this. That's the, that's the, the smallest benefit you'll ever see is just the typing save. Um, as we get into more and more dynamic objects, meaning objects that grow and shrink and are altered by things that are going on with the user, we need to have relative referencing so we don't have to predict exactly what the user is going to do. And so in our next video, I'll demonstrate how relative referencing can help you in objects like dynamic tables where rows are being added and taken away. So we'll cover that next time on our True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. For now, I hope this helps. And even if you don't think it is helping you, stick with it. JavaScript, once you gain some handles on it, can be very powerful and can benefit you in many ways. 
So until next time, remember that IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy.